Hey everyone, Dan Central back for the second part of my Q&A series of videos. Uh, just before I go on to the next set of questions guys, there was two quick things I wanted to mention that I was meant to actually mention at the start of this set of videos and I didn't quite get around to it, is that yeah, for those of you that saw my Games Room tour a fair, a fair while ago, when I first got this Games Room sorted and up and running and got the bookcases in and got all the games up on display etc, um, you remember that I got to the PSP section and said I couldn't find the PSP and that it was in a box somewhere, I didn't know where, da 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 da. Well, the other day I actually found it. So there we go, guys. It's in a, a really nice case at the moment. Uh, there's the back of it. And this actually will lead me on quite nicely um, to a question that I've been given, which I'm going to answer in, 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 in a little bit, about the new PS Vita. So let's get it out as well. So as I said before, guys, it is just a standard black PSP. But basically just wanted to show it because I um, didn't get a chance to show it in the games room tour because I couldn't find it. But that's basically, obviously, my the PSP. It's got a nice little white... And the tag on the end, it's pretty cool. I'm really excited about this. Now, for those of you that saw my games and tour, I you will see that I've got a keyboard in here and I've got a piano. Now, really funny story. Well, not funny, but just surprising and just so exciting. My brother's just moved house and I went to help him move in the other day. And um, the guys that were well, the people that lived there before him had left a load of stuff behind. Um, that we could kind of, um, you know, have because I didn't want it kind of thing. And it's basically it's like a side alleyway where there's a, a gate towards um, the front garden so you can get through, obviously. Well, you can't, well, you should be able to get through this gate, but the moment it's all blocked up with a load of stuff, um, which was I was going through. And I found a load of CDs that I needed um, for like doing spin classes and stuff. So I, I, I took those. And then just out of nowhere, I peered around the corner and there was just m this massive keyboard on its side sitting there. And it was like a proper Yamaha, so it wasn't like a tacky old one, it was a proper, st well, I never state of the art, but it was a proper good one anyway. A bit like the one that I've, you guys have already seen. And I just couldn't believe it. And my brother let me have it for free, which was awesome of him. And now it's in my games room. So I've got two keyboards now and a, and a piano. So what I'll do is, guys, I'm just going to spin the camera around, okay? So there's the keyboard that you guys saw in the games room tour. So I've had that about ten years now. And it still works perfectly and I absolutely love it. Spin on this way to keep you guys guessing. Obviously, there's now the piano, which cost the most out of everything. It was about 1,500, uh, and it's the Clavinova CLP 340. Uh, absolutely amazing piano. Now, da -da 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 -da, I've now got a second keyboard. How cool is that? Now it's the it's the Yamaha. Let me have a look. It's the Yamaha Portable Grand DGX 205. Okay, and absolutely love it. And what I thought I would do, just to give you guys a bit of a flavour as to what you can do with it, I thought I'd play a little bit of a song, because this is where, as well I haven't done anything on the piano in ages. Uh, so I thought I'd play a little bit of Canon um, by Packabell. Um, obviously there's loads of different variations you can do for it. So I thought I'd put some nice string sounds on, but I thought I would dance it up and do a bit of a remix of it. So I'm going to play a little bit of Canon with a bit of a, a dance beat in the background um, to kind of give you guys a bit of a flavour of what it can do. Apologies if the sound doesn't come out very good because it's using the built-in mic and it can go very fuzzy at times. But I'm just going to basically give you guys a little bit of a hint as to, or a bit of a taste as to what this keyboard can do. Yeah? So... <laughs>
Guys, so that was just me playing a little bit of uh, Canon by, by um, the classical composer Packer Bell, but I was doing a bit of a dance remix version just to show you guys um, what the keyboard can do. Apologies, I just listened back to that actually, and there's a little bit, well I say a little bit, there's a bit of um, feed, static and fuzzy stuff. Uh, I think the microphone's a little bit too loud, but again, it being inbuilt, I haven't got, um, you know, I didn't have my condenser mic out because it's packed away at the moment. Um, so yeah, but literally that wasn't a performance, that was just you guys to see how fast I can play um, certain pieces and how Canon suppose, suppose how Canon sounds with a dance remix with them on I suppose and just kind of hear the kind of things that the keyboard can do. Moving on to the actual questions again. So right, moving on to an absolute legend um, YouTuber, his name is Adam and he is known as Interghost. He is great, he really is, he's just a, a proper decent guy. Uh, met him at the Ultimate Gamer Weekend, we had such a laugh, uh, we did a joint pickups video, um, we had loads of fun at the tournament, um, had a great night out, um, fortunately he went off clubbing with one set of the group and then I, I went to a um, local karaoke uh, bar really uh, with, the other, with the other half, so I wasn't with him for the clubbing side, uh, but um, we went out for an uh, a meal in the evening which was really awesome um, and just had a great night really and then obviously the, the second day um, the day after and it was just great and it was just great to, to actually meet him in person and he's just as awesome as he is behind the camera so really really great um, so again thanks for your questions mate really do appreciate it I have sent some to Intergost as well because he's currently doing a QA, and a so we're kind of doing it at the same time he sent me some I sent him some so we can answer each other's which is great so um, he says, nice one, Dan, and well-deserved, so cheers, dude. Um, I'm doing a Q&A video too, so that's what I just said. Um, so his first question is, the top three cartoons. Oh, you proper legend. Okay, so the top three cartoons that you watched as a kid. Okay, now the first one that I can think of, top of my head, is Alvin and the Chipmunks. Um, I used to watch it for hours on end. I uh, just absolutely loved it. Um, I had like two or three videos of it where it was just like full length cartoons, uh, one after another, and I used to just watch it over and over again. Um, another one would probably be like Tom and Jerry, um, an absolute classic cartoon. Uh, it just made me laugh um, and just can't fault it really. Every episode was just, just, just as fun to watch as the last. They used to have it on Cartoon Network quite a lot. Then they moved it over to Boomerang, I think it was. And now they've done all these spin-off shows like Tom and Jerry Tales. And obviously you had Tom and Jerry Kids as well. Oh, and I'm torn between another one, but I've got to say Sonic the Hedgehog. I really have. Um, obviously you've had um, Sat AM, so Sonic the Adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog, I think it is. And then you've also had Sonic Underground as well, which wasn't as good. Um, but that was great as well. There's so many others. They'll probably be in my top three. But obviously you had like things like Dexter's Laboratory, um, Johnny Bravo, uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Um, the Cramp Twins, all the stuff on Cartoon Network that they still show now. Um, Cow and Chicken. Uh, I was having a laugh with someone at work the other day, and we were just being really stupid and just going, Chicken! for some reason. But yeah, I used to love that. Just, oh, just so many really. Uh, obviously, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, they're all classics as well. Top Cat, um, Yogi Bear, uh, all the Hanna Barbera stuff. Um, Scooby Doo. Come on, who can forget Scooby Doo? Absolutely amazing. Both the um, the cartoons, and then obviously Scrappy-Doo was in the later episodes, and then you had obviously the films. Another show I used to absolutely adore was City and Sweet, but obviously that wasn't a cartoon, it was a you know real life, um, not real life, because obviously the puppets aren't real, but what means it wasn't a cartoon. Um, I used to absolutely love that as well. I'm loving the questions that aren't necessarily gaming related as well, so it's really, really cool. So nice one, mate. Um, second question that he asks is, um, right, if you could help to make a sequel to a game, which one would you choose? Oh, that's such a hard question, because I would love to see loads of games made into a sequel that have never had one. Um, okay, one that I would say is, obviously the Philips CDI was a bit of a flop, and it didn't do very well, and obviously you've got loads of really rubbish games on there. Um, poor graphics that are just absolutely appalling, such as obviously uh, Zelda Wand of Gamelon, 
um, Link the Face of Evil, um, Hotel Mario, oh, come on, what's going on with that, um, etc. Um, but one game that absolutely is, is uh, absolutely incredible, apart from Burn Cycle, is a game called Escape from Cyber City. Now, they did try and make a sequel called Return to Cyber City, um, but it got withdrawn and it never got released. And I've only ever seen the cover art, I've never seen any like possible footage, I don't know how far they got into it anyway. Um, so I would love to see that actually released. Um, so the question was, if you could help to make a sequel, I would love to help to make the rest of it. If, it. if a little bit was already done, I'd love to help make the rest. If none of it was really done, I'd love to help make it um, in its entirety, really, from, from scratch. Um, and then another one I'd absolutely love to see made into a sequel is the absolutely awesome shmup on the Mega Drive called um, Biohazard Battle, which um, I've done a, um, a gameplay vid of, it's a bit of like a challenge vid on my channel. Um, I did also recommend it to Marcus X4278, and he then um, had a look at it into the gameplay vid on his channel. Um, but it's never had a sequel, and I absolutely love that game. It's one of my favourite shmups on the Mega Drive ever. So I would love to see that and Escape from Cyber City actually had to have a sequel bought out. Um, so that's two. I know it said one. If I could, if I had to choose, I'd probably say um, probably say uh, By Has a Battle because it's, because it's a lot more fast paced. But I'd love to see either of those made into a sequel, and I'd be more than happy to help out. Okay, so that's cool. Um, question three: How often do you play video games? Not as often as I'd love to, um, I'm going to be completely honest. Um, when I was growing up, I was on them every day, 24-7. Uh, whether it was the N64, the SNES, um, the Mega Drive, the Mars System, the Dreamcast. Since growing up, getting older, having to start work, etc., it's become a lot harder. My passion for gaming has never, ever gone. It's never ever, It's not even dropped in compared to what it was like when I was a kid. It's just the difference is now, I, I'm, it's harder to make time to do it. But having said that, um, you know, I'm not until late tomorrow. I'll probably go on the Xbox tonight and play a load of um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Or um, I've been going, going back and playing like Gears of War and stuff. Um, so, and I'm a tournament. So, you know, whenever I'm getting a chance, I'm able to. But I just wish that I could play a little bit more. That's why also my videos aren't as, as sort of frequent as they maybe have used to be. But, you know, it doesn't mean to say that I've lost interest because I never will and I never have. So, don't worry, I'm not going to suddenly disappear off my channel and it's going to go dead. I'll always be churning out videos um, because I enjoy it too much. Um, do you have a brother or a sister? I have a brother. Um, for those of you that ever saw some of my early videos, when my brother was, my brother went through a period where he was he had his own YouTube channel. It was called Click for Update, and he was doing. He did a few gaming bits and pieces, like on Bioshock. He did a he did a video on that. Um, and I did my, my Xbox, in fact if you look on my channel my Xbox 360 collection videos are with him, they're joint with my brother so we do it together, he shows off his games, I show off mine there is also a video on my channel where we're both in it, uh, messing about, having a bit of a laugh um, it's called Dan Central meets Click for Update or something or something like that it's in between my Super Mario World playthrough um, it's like between like parts 3 and 4 or something um, and we just had a right laugh and um, he was just being um, his general funny self really. But now he doesn't really do it so much anymore because he's kind of moved on and he kind of does other things. He loves gaming just as much as I do, although he prefers modern gaming to retro gaming. Um, he will play the odd retro game for a bit of a laugh, for a bit of nostalgia, but he won't be passionate about it, he won't enjoy it too much. He'll get bored quite easily after playing a few rounds and want to go back on the 360. He may go on, for example, the the Dreamcast for a bit and play um, like Soldier of Fortune, like the first one, or Shenmue. Um, and then he would probably get bored after a bit, have to go back on the Xbox um, 360 because he's more about current gen, whereas I'm a bit more about retro, I'm sort of the opposite. Thanks for sticking with it. I really hope you enjoyed the, the piano bit, or the keyboard bit at the start. I know the, 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 the audio wasn't great, so apologies, but it was kind of like a spur of the moment. I wasn't planning on doing it until I started recording, and I thought, yeah, actually, I'll play a bit. So again, it was a little bit, and I edited a bit because I messed up, because I was, I was playing quite quick, and then I had a bit of a mind blank and forgot what some of the chords were because um, they weren't written down in the actual uh, sheet music so I played the wrong stuff it sounded really weird so by editing it it sounds a bit better now uh, and obviously I showed my PSP as well so you guys are completely com confirmed and you know rest assured that I do have one alright well thanks a lot for watching this part guys join me in part 3 and we'll go through the rest of the questions stick with it